Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. We cannot give up on peace. We cannot give up on a two-state solution. Israel and Palestinians equally deserve to live in safety, dignity, and peace. President Biden trying to build American support for two allies now fighting wars on the other side of the world. Tonight, the president made his pitch that supporting Israel and Ukraine with billions of Americans' tax dollars is in the nation's best interest. Thanks for being with us. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skilly, and the president spoke to the nation from the Oval Office a day before he'll ask Congress for $100 billion in foreign aid. Chris Pallone with the latest from Washington tonight. Good evening, my fellow Americans. In a rare nationally televised address from the Oval Office, President Biden made the case that it's in Americans' best interest to continue supporting Israel and Ukraine in their respective wars. History has taught us that when terrorists don't pay a price for their terror, when dictators don't pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos and death and more destruction. The White House is expected to ask Congress for about $100 billion in aid, $60 billion to Ukraine, $40 billion for Israel, Taiwan, and to help with the migrant crisis at the southern border. The president spoke with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky shortly before the speech to emphasize the U.S.'s commitment to helping Kyiv fend off the Russian invasion. If we walk away and let Putin erase Ukraine's independence, would-be aggressors around the world be emboldened to try the same? The risk of conflict and chaos could spread in other parts of the world. The White House funding request will be sent to Congress tomorrow. The Democratic-controlled Senate is expected to act quickly to pass the supplemental, a move which could put pressure on House Republicans to sort out their leadership issues and end the legislative logjam in that chamber. But even some of the president's allies fear Americans are growing weary of sending tax dollars overseas. I know sometimes we all got short attention spans, but this is a very real conflict as well about good versus evil in Ukraine, and we need to stand with our European allies and with Ukrainians. The U.S. has sent more than $40 billion in security aid to Ukraine since Russia invaded in 2022. Chris Pallone, NBC News, Washington. All right, Chris, now to the latest on the UAW strike. Union President Sean Fain is expected to hit social media tomorrow with a bargaining update. This is Ford and Stellantis are announcing more layoffs starting Monday. We'll start with Stellantis. They're going to lay off an additional 100 employees at the Toledo machining plant. That'll bring the total to more than 1,500 of their employees off the job. Last night, Ford added another 150 strike-related layoffs at the Sterling Axle plant. So Ford layoffs now total more than 2,700. It all comes on day 35 of the strike. As I mentioned, UAW President Sean Fain, we expect, will give us an update on the bargaining. We will have the latest on that on Local 4 News tomorrow, first at 4. Meanwhile, a sign of solidarity in downtown Detroit. UAW workers joined striking workers with Blue Cross Blue Shield and Detroit's three casinos for a rally at Hart Plaza. Jacqueline Francis has their message. It was a fitting place for these striking workers to meet here at Detroit's transcending monument, which is dedicated to the labor movement in Michigan. Marching from opposite sides of downtown, three industries came together today, gathering at Hart Plaza, united in their fight. It felt pretty historical being out here with the, all the other uh, strikers from the other companies. In the crowd, auto workers, casino workers, health care and health insurance workers. Blue Cross Blue Shield. All pushing for better pay, among other demands. They, wanna take, they want us to take 20 years to get the top pay. We're not having that. I want you to know that the whole state of Michigan is here with you. Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist among the elected officials supporting the cause. Every struggle works together. Every struggle fights together. Detroit City Council President Mary Sheffield encouraging workers to keep on. This truly is our moment. This is our time. Uh, and so do not grow weary in well-doing. But know that this is our due season. Walking off the job earlier this week, casino workers showed out in force. Before the strike started, I was pulling 20 to 40 hours of overtime just to cover my bills. We're not asking for no pity because we're standing up because we built this damn city. 
Other unions like the Teamsters came out to the rally in support. Reporting at Hart Plaza, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Okay, Jacqueline, thank you. New at 11, a 14-year-old boy is in the hospital after police say he accidentally shot himself in Canton. It happened at an apartment complex near Warren and Lily Roads. Police say the teen was hit in the face. We're awaiting an update on his condition. Well, do you feel like the city of Detroit is more safe? Latest crime stats would say yes, including a rather surprising drop in the number of carjackings in the city. Sean Lay in the neighborhoods tonight talking to a working mom who is trying to keep those crime numbers trending in the right direction. Well, good evening. We're digging into these new crime statistics, new numbers, and the numbers mean people, and it's people in Detroit neighborhoods helping these numbers trend in the right direction. Tamara Smith knows crime is down in her Detroit neighborhood. She's helping make that happen. It's something as just simple, simply as turning your porch light on, reporting crime that you see. And it's a perfect recipe for a disaster for a criminal. Smith is a working mom, but also patrols her neighborhood at night. She can see that some major crimes in Detroit are down because she knows people are fed up with criminals. Detroiters are tired and they, they are privy to more information than ever before, and they are more engaged themselves. Let's dig into what crimes are down in Detroit. DPD reporting to the Detroit Police Commissioners the latest crime statistics. Homicide is down 11%, uh, non-fatal shootings down 9%, carjacking down 32%. I can't tell you the last time I saw those type of numbers in the city of Detroit. Crime statistics are numbers, but those numbers represent people. Why do you think it's trending down right now? Once again, I think we have an engaged community. Detroiters are tired. Why not stand up? Why not speak up? And if you see that speaking up and standing up is changing your community, it will be a trend. I think a snowball effect where others will get involved. So and do people, so. police, partnership making a difference. Absolutely. People here in the neighborhoods continue to tell us drag racing. Dangerous driving remains a big problem, extremely dangerous quality of life issue. And police say so far this year, 574 people have been investigated for dangerous driving, drag racing, 304 traffic stops were made this year, 168 citations written, 34 cars impounded, 24 felony arrests resulted in this, and 13 illegal guns were recovered. More of that people police partnership that we're seeing and that's why we're seeing these numbers going in that right direction in Detroit tonight Sean lay local four. All right Sean time now for a check of the weather you could see there rain moving through uh, much of southeastern Michigan yeah, forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams joins us now and uh, Kim what's the weekend looking like more rain more rain but also a lot of dry periods as well it won't be an entire washout tonight speaking of dry periods we are seeing some drying out there but also pockets of rain as well right now moving through uh, novi waterford flint lapeer but it is just a, a little spritzer sprinkle in warren also in downtown Detroit. Now for tomorrow, we'll continue to have clouds and there'll also be a scattered shower, but much more scattered than the heavy rain that we had today. Our high climbs up to 58 degrees before going right back down again for the weekend. Take a look at this temperature trend. It's a little bit interesting because the weekend will be cool. In fact, by Sunday, even though we have sunshine, it will only be 51 degrees in the afternoon. But watch what happens next week. A nice warm up, a pretty good warm up ahead as well. 66 Wednesday, 65 on Thursday. Now, Climate Prediction Center did release their outlook for the next three months, so for November, December, and January. And we'll talk about whether we expect temperatures and precip to be above or below average. All right, Kim, a new bill will allow high school student athletes to enter into name, in image, and likeness, or NIL agreements with businesses. The bill that passed today in the Michigan House brings the state in line with about 20 others that have legalized the agreements for high schoolers. It would prohibit students from entering NIL deals requiring them to wear or promote a specific sponsor during team activities. The legislation will now move to the Senate. Controversy brewing for the University of Michigan's football team ahead of their annual tangle with Michigan State. The NCAA is investigating allegations of a plot to steal opponents' play calling signals by sending folks to scout their games. A Big Ten officials will only say it has notified Michigan's upcoming opponents about the investigation. Now, the NCAA does not have rules specifically against stealing signs, but it does prohibit in person advanced scouting of opponents. It also has bylaws prohibiting unsportsmanlike activity. Bernie will have more on how Jim Harbaugh is responding to the allegations coming up in just a little bit in sport.